Back 15, you think? Back 15, okay, here we go.
stern. So I'm going to be a long five. Because I'm still going to 1.7 of stern. I don't want to get up into the bolt pad up the other side of the channel. Uh, going to be a. So as I do this, it stops the stern weight and really starts snapping the bow around. Okay, now, now I'm just about to stop with my stern weight, so I'm going to start backing again so I don't drive ahead into that ship. You should, you should see the ship is now in the frame. Okay, thank you. We'll give you a call once you get all back up. I'm going to reduce my power ahead so I don't drive into this. Uh, I'm starting to get a little bit of headway, and I don't want that because I don't want to be alongside that ship. And the room that I was running out of in the back of me is looking good, so I'm backing stronger with my starboard engine than I am with my port engine. My port engine is just using it because I got the rudder here all the way over. Now you can see that a little better now. Their port 
bridge wing. The bridge is actually in the center that we can't even see. So somebody steering the boat wouldn't even see anybody if we were going like this right now because they have so many on there. But they have lookouts all over the land, so that's what they have to do. So the new, newer ships are designed, you know, the big ones like this are designed like the one on the right here. And uh, they have a much better view of things. So now, since I have to turn around, and this thing doesn't turn on a dime, I'm actually going to come left a little bit. You can see behind the, the Merce ship and behind the bunker barge that's bunkering it right now, I'm going to go over there in that spot and then try to swing things around. And you'll see what I'm going to do here. Even though I'm going to eventually be making a clockwise turn, I'm going counterclockwise a little bit to give myself a little bit more room in the turn. Shut that AC off. You can hear me a little bit better, hopefully. Now it seems odd, but we're doing 6.3 knots, so I'm going to start slowing down just because I don't want so much weight that I go on by the ship <laughs> as I uh, make my turn. steer from the stern so I can't just go up there and bring the bow over I have to start moving the stern over there to get the bow to go so that spud barge we call that a, it's a dridge up there to the spuds up there that uh if, if I go up there and turn I'll end up my stern and go right into them so I kind of have to start a little early to get the bow out of the way now we're slowed down to four and a half knots right now. So because we get four and a half knots of movement, I think I'd like to get up a little bit further before I start making my move here. Our tankerman right there is getting a long pull out. And what he's doing, it's very hard to get people to catch your lines over here, especially because they're so far away you know, that's so high up. So he'll be using something we call a Panama chop. Sometimes we can't reach over there, so he'll stick a line on the end of the pole and try to lasso the Panama chop. Okay, now we're down to 3.8 knots. So I'm gonna start my turn. Hopefully I've calculated this right. So now I take my starboard engine and it's out of gear. I give more power to my port engine to get a swinging. And like I say all the time, I'm keeping an eye on that uh, dredge that's tied up in the dock because I don't want my stern to swing over on the dredge. Now you might ask why I'm not coming astern with this one yet. And the reason why is I want to get some movement forward so that I don't hit that dredge. I'm going to be backing on the starboard engine pretty soon. I just want to give myself a little bit more room. Now I'll start backing. Oh uh, yeah, sounds good. All the time the rudder's hard over to the right. You'll see when we're moving barges at slow speed, it's very rare that we use a little rudder. It's usually hard over one way or hard over the other way.
Am I sliding sideways or what? Right now it's going just ahead of down the channel. So we're doing good. I'm going to miss that uh, bridge. Everything's coming around okay. A little bit more power ahead. I've been a little conservative here. If I was a superstar, I would have turned much earlier on the ship. But that doesn't give me a lot of room to uh, wiggle it over there. So by going farther behind the ship, I have more of an area, kind of a staging area to get in position that I want to as I approach the ship. like this which is good that means the stern is going that way even though the bow looks like it's coming out so we're lining up good I'm going to straighten out the rudder and by giving it power what I'm doing is I don't really want speed here but I want way on by putting way on the boat it straightens it out if I don't do anything it will continue to rotate clockwise like we did with our turn now you can see what we call the rake of the ship there's the stern of the ship and then you'll see further up alongside of the ship is all flat. That angle that goes down there, that, that's called the rake. And that's a, real, that's a real danger for us. Okay, right now I'm doing 2.4 knots, so I've just taken my inboard engine out of gear. I say inboard because it's inboard to where we want to go. This would be outboard. So my port engine is all stopped, and I'm just in clutch on my, port, on my, my starboard engine. And I want to get up there as close as I can, but I don't, I can't do it. I don't want to land on that rake because I'll go underneath the ship. That would be really, really bad because the, the fendering, the, the, the yeah, fenders yeah. that we have are ineffective unless you're on something that's flat. You can see there's a little hole. I don't know if you're able to see it, but there's a little white line and a little hole. Yeah, and that little hole is where there's a Panama yeah, shock. Yeah, and what a Panama shock is, is a right, bollard right. that's recessed yeah. inside the ship. Okay. Now what I'm trying to do here is to get the bow up there 
And remember I told you I can't really pull the bow out. What I, now I'm going all stop and I'm just going to let it drift because I'm doing two knots, 2.3 knots here. So I'm kind of going a little, coming in a little hot, so i got to be careful here. But what I want to do is get over there and then swing the stern over. Now what I'm going to do is start to take some of the way off by giving it a reverse. I think we're going to try and grab this kind of a uh, when we get there. I mean, if we can get a long time of it, it'd be like a big chip to it, so, you know, it'd be, I don't know if it'd be tough or not. Yeah, getting it midship's going to be very tough, but I'll, I'll see what I can do. You know, it's easier to get the bow in and the stern in, but I'll see what I can do. All right. Uh, we're down to, like, 30 on the bow. 30 on the bow. Very good. Now what I'm going to do is set my rudder up to kind of walk. Now, you can't really walk a loaded barge, but you can do what I call leaning it. And that means that we won't really go sideways, but we'll start making some momentum to the... Because I don't think I'm going to ease my rudder because I want to get that bow a little bit closer over there. I'm down to 0.7 knots right now. Stop it right here. 
So as I bring the stern out of the bow over, the stern will pop out, and that's not a good thing. So you can see they're trying to get that in there. Excellent. All right, I'm all stop you. Let me know when we're ready to go. Okay, so now the stern has come out, the bow has come in. I've already reset my rudder to put it to the other side because we're falling off all the time. Okay, you ready for me to come ahead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The line's up there. They're coming ahead. Here I come. Okay, so now if I come straight ahead, the bow is going to come out and the stern is going to go in. Um, so I'm going to try to set my rudder straight. And the whole key is because it takes a while for the rudder to get from one side to the other. Now you can see I'm just a little bit of port wheel. Um, and now we're only doing 0.3 knots when I'm going all stop because if he wraps that line up, we'll walk right through that line because there's so much energy in the barge. Uh, we're gonna wrap it up there. Still a back line right now, but I'll let you know uh, when I start coming tight. Very good. So the whole key is if you can get your rudder set before you have to use it. Uh, uh, breast line now. It makes things much better. Very good. Now as that breast line comes tight, it's going to start uh, to pull us tight. over. I'm starting to back because I don't want to break those two lines. Because now you can see how the, it, that uh, line is pulling the bow over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, uh, three line on the bow, like trying to paint there. Very good. Now we're at at zero knot, so I'm going to start working into that line because the bow is coming over pretty quick, so I try to stop it. And so now we just go nice and easy. Okay. And because the uh, line... We're about to touch up on the bow, we're coming pretty good. The line's not like off or anything, we're stopped in it, we're good. Very good. Okay, so now we're up against on the bow, now i got to reset the rudder to the port just in case we bounce out and we roll in underneath that rake, which we don't want to do. So, while they're putting that line up, I'm resetting my rudder to port to keep us, you'll see the bow is still trying to come out because of the momentum. And this should stop that, now we've got it stopped, so now I bring the rudder back to midship and we can just work on that line, it should hold us right in place. Traffic from the Elk River. Elk River traffic. We got a few lines out ship side. You can check me out. Thank you for your assistance. Roger, check down the Elk River. Anyway, that's about it. This is going to be boring. We're going to wait for everyone to send lines down. This could take another 45 minutes. But hopefully you guys got the gist of it. And hopefully it was good for you. <laughs> Great.